I'm just uh, I'm back in the studio and um, I wanted to discuss in this video some of the kind of contemporary ideas that inform my work. The last couple of episodes uh, you've seen the kind of processes that I do and the, the way I make my work and the physical um, kind of aspects of it. But my work is um, a lot more than just aesthetics. There's a, there's a whole kind of contemporary ideology behind it that informs the work and I kind of wanted to explain a little bit about that. So a couple of years ago when I was studying, I was an abstract painter. I was really interested in kind of the work of uh, Jasper Johns and the constructions of Robert Rauschenberg. Uh, if you're not familiar with these, I'll probably put a couple of links down in the video so you can check out their Wikipedia pages or uh, the Tate's usually quite a good source of information as well. But um, after studying these guys for a few years and being really interested, I came to the conclusion um, that abstract painting was quite ubiquitous. There was a lot of it going on and even though I appreciated it, I wasn't a fantastic abstract expressionist or a fantastic painter in general. I also felt that I wasn't doing anything new. Um, the art world in itself, especially if you look at Duchamp's work, again, I'll, I'll drop a link in there, he kind of uh, changed the nature of the art world. He, he um, well, for those that aren't familiar, he put a urinal in an art gallery in a, in a really simplistic term. And by doing that, he gave artists um, fresh power to kind of take any object and place it in a gallery setting. And doing that enabled anything to be artwork. And when you give a, an artist the power to do that, essentially everything becomes an artwork. And when everything's art, simultaneously nothing's art. So people suddenly decided that the art world was broken and that, uh, that artists, you know, had no uh, function anymore. But here we are, you know, there are artists still, we're making work and, and I, I'm, I'm not, um, I'm not um, put off by this fact. For, for me, it sets me free, you know, it's the only kind of subject of human, um, human output, uh, for want of a better phrase, that's free from everything. I'm able to do things and recycle old ideas and, and, and do things that are completely and utterly new, but simultaneously, um, well, aren't new. And that, that, that for me is almost like uh, the adult version of child's play. You're free in a completely and utterly unique way. Anyway, I digress. After studying and getting very interested in abstract expressionism, I came across the work of Lucio Fontana, and he um, took canvases and sort of sliced them and he opened up a whole new branch of art where, uh, or a whole new branch of two-dimensional art that wasn't two-dimensional. He took a canvas and, and sliced it or punctured it in a way that, that opened and, and made the question of the space behind the canvas. So it wasn't just 2D or 3D, it wasn't painting or sculpture, it was some sort of hybrid in the middle. And I really, uh, well, that, that idea resonated with me. So. I then started experimenting with uh, canvases of cutting them, sort of stitching them back together, a uh, bit of painting, uh, just really playing and developing. From this idea, I thought, well, instead of, instead of slicing a canvas, um, aesthetically it wasn't, it wasn't very successful in my opinion, uh, I thought, let's, let's, let's start with a, an empty frame and weave a surface across it in a, in a twine of some kind. So I started doing this, and then I would take that and, and monochromatically just paint it, one single colour. And then I felt like I had really stumbled across something kind of unique and new, that embodied the ideas that I was interested in. Um, it was aesthetically successful in a way that I liked, and uh, that was kind of the start of, of the construction unit that, that you can actually see behind me here. Several years of development have, have, have led to this sort of work where I kind of experimented with something called the beyond the theme. So I went beyond the canvas, I went beyond the surface. Uh, I was still making work that was in a, in a square, or in a box, sorry, and, and then I, I sort of took the corner pieces out or the mid pieces out. Um, and this was then, you know, beyond the square. But I still was in this box. You could still kind of imagine drawing a, uh, a square or a box, sorry, you could see where the, the, the lines were missing. 
And then I thought, well, if we take it and invert it or, or kind of just play with the shape altogether, and then you end up with, with sort of this kind of work here. Um, and really, it's, it's just really a, a kind of natural development. So I've kind of explained a bit more about the constructions this week. And um, in the upcoming episodes, I'm going to um, explain some more contemporary ideology behind it that informs the work and the reason that I make the work. The reason that I think art is still important in the world, the reason that mm, that I pursue art and pursue life as an artist, because I think for me that's the only way that I can come to terms with the problems in our society and the problems in our world. And, and it also gives me a platform to discuss certain things that I find um, really important. Um, so that's enough and uh, I'll see you all next week.